you familiar with the story of Jonah? We've grown up on it, heard the story of the prophet that God told him to go one way, he went another way, and then he ended up in that original plan. I was Jonah. Okay, not literally, but I want to read something to you from the book of Jonah. I'll read it in Hebrew and then I'll repeat that in English. Vayehi dvar Adonai el Yonah ben Amitai le'emor, kum lecha el Ninve ha'ir agdola, ukra alea ki ilita ra'atam lefanai, vayakem Yonah livroach tarshisha. And now in English. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amitai, saying, Arise, go to Ninveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish. That's how the story starts, and I would say that's how my story started too. I grew up in the land of Israel. I grew up as a secular Jewish person. I still am Jewish. Uh, I did not know who the Messiah is, the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, the world's Messiah. I had no idea. I had no clue who he was. Um, we, you know, my family and I went to a synagogue on, uh, on high holidays. But yet there was something in my heart that called on the name of the Lord deep within me. That was my spirit calling, not me personally. And yet... I couldn't put it into words until I became an adult, to be precise, in my, in my 30s. That searching, that yearning uh, started to gnaw at me. And God called me to himself. He told me to go to Ninveh, if you may, and I went to Tarshish. What did I do? I went the other way. I was so scared. Because you must understand, as a Jewish person growing up in the land of Israel, um, Seeking God could mean either you are ultra-Orthodox, which it didn't really work for me, um, or maybe New Agey, which I've done in the search for God, or maybe you go to another country and try different types of religions, which I've also tried. I didn't go to other countries, but I also tried. I tried and tried and tried to reach that one truth. And yet, throughout that journey, God knew my heart, just like he knows your heart right this second. If you're watching this, this is not by accident. God knew that this moment will come for you to watch this show before the creation of the world, before you were even born. He actually knew that I'll be sitting here and I will share this story with you. Yeshua, I call him Yeshua because that is the Hebrew name of Jesus. Jesus is not Hebrew. His name was not Jesus. He was not born in the name of Jesus, it's just a translation that we use commonly. But for Jewish people, it, it's a bit of an insensitive name just because of history of persecution and what have you. Yeshua literally in Hebrew means salvation. And that was his given name. In the book of Isaiah, we have the prophecy that Alma or a virgin will give birth to a son and his name will be Aviad, uh, a, a god of uh, everlasting God, uh, Prince of Peace, Sal Shalom, uh, Prince of Peace, Ever Aviad, Everlasting Father. Why would a baby be named those names unless he is the Son of God, Yeshua Hamashiach? And so Yeshua, and by the way, his last name is not Christ. Christ is simply the name of Messiah, Mashiach, which has a Hebrew root of anointed, the anointed one. Yeshua revealed himself to me personally, and yet I ran to Tarshish. I was so scared. That was mm, 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago, actually. And when I reached the end of my fleeing, I came to the end of me. And that's when God came. He was there this whole time waiting for me to just say, you know what, I'm done running. Just like Jonah who ended up in the belly of a whale, as the, as the Bible tells us, and yet must have been very unpleasant and smelly, but God didn't allow anything to harm him, just to scare him a little bit. Well, that was me too, okay? God didn't harm me because God doesn't harm us, but I removed myself from his protection 
to the point of sickness in my body. When I heard that, I knew I had nothing else to fear. See, me running away from him was not out of rebellion necessarily. It was out of fear. I was afraid that, A, um, first of all, a as a Jewish person, I'm not allowed to believe in Jesus, in Yeshua. Right? I had no knowledge. I didn't know from the Bible, from the Word of God, that he's everywhere in the Tanakh, in the Old Testament, or the First Testament, as I like to call it. I didn't know that. I had no congregation to go to. I had nobody to ask. All I saw growing up as a child is ultra-Orthodox people praying to a God that seemed far, far away. And I couldn't relate to that, to be honest with you. So my running away like Jonah was out of fear. God knew that. And all this time, I truly believed that he was right there in the background saying, my daughter, I'm right here. I'm right here. I will never, leave, never leave you nor forsake you, as the Bible said. In fact, before I even read any scriptures, I remember the voice, uh, which I know now, the voice of God, in my spirit saying, I am always with you. Isn't that just so comforting? That is hope. There is nothing that I can do on my own to mess things up. Well, I can. I can actually... I can do a lot of things to mess things up, but God, but God, he's standing right around me as he is welcoming you as well to his family. When I ran away, he allowed me to kind of like a toddler. You know what? You want to have a tantrum? Go have a tantrum. But just know that I'm right here waiting for you and I'm going to wrap my hands around you and love you no matter what. And so the day that I was diagnosed with cancer, that was the day I gave my life to the Lord. I literally fell on my knees at a BC cancer center. Some of you might have heard my testimony on the internet out there. That's the moment when I came to the end of myself and I said, you know what, God, no more running away. You want me to go to Ninveh? I'll go to Ninveh, metaphorically speaking. I have nothing else to fear. If I die, I die, right? But if I live, if I live, I want to live for you. And if I die, at least take me to be by your side. No more running. I had no hope in the world. Before the cancer, I was fighting depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, because I couldn't figure life out. What is this? Things change all the time. Things are fast. I don't know how to live in this world. That was my thought. I figured if I study more, if I get more degrees, if I, um, you know, do more things, I will be happy. It was never really about finances or accumulating things for me personally. For others, it, 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 it may have been. I was never into addictions or drugs per se. That's my journey. But I was yearning and I was searching and I couldn't find a hope until God, until I reached the end of myself. If you're at the end of yourself today, congratulations, because you're about to get promoted in the kingdom. I actually remember a day when I went to visit a church with a friend, never in my life been to a church. I was sitting there thinking, what am I doing here? You know, I'm a Jew and all that talk. And... That was the state of that seeking and also the anxiety and depression that was all over me. And suddenly the pastor looked into the audience right at me, pointed at me and said, you're about to get promoted. God is going to promote you. That really shook me to the core. That pastor never met me, never knew my name, had no clue what I was going through. God was going to promote me? I mean, I, there's no way this person would have known what I was going through. I knew like I knew that he didn't mean a job promotion, even though those are nice too, and God certainly opens those doors. I knew that something is about to happen, but I was not yet at the end of myself, even at that time. It took another year or so for me to relinquish control in a way of, living the way I wanted to live. That's what I'm talking about. You know, and 
And when I did that, that's when Yeshua and His Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, came to live inside of my heart and gave me life abundantly, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. What is that life or living water? You know, Yeshua calls himself in the book of John, living water uh, that if we drink from, we will never thirst again. I wanted those water. I didn't want to be thirsty again. I've been thirsty my whole life. And I remember in my 20s being literally physically thirsty all the time. And I couldn't figure out why. I, I, I did some tests. Nothing was wrong with me biologically, physically. I was thirsty all the time. I would carry water bottles with me everywhere. And yet spiritually, I was even more thirsty. I kept looking and seeking, going to different places. But Yeshua is living water. And when I, when I finally read that in the scripture, I wanted those water. I wanted them so badly. And you know what? Yes, I'm still thirsty on a physical level because, hey, we need water to live. But I have those living waters inside of me in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, the, the Messiah, HaMashiach. And we're going to dig in a little bit more of that. But I just wanted to remind you, if you're watching today, it's not by chance. God created this day for you to watch this. If you're a Jew or a Gentile, same thing. And I pray that you would join me to the end of this journey to discover more of who Yeshua is and how this living water could also be yours. A program experience delivering what God is saying to the human race today. Reading the Bible from cover to cover, we learn how God spoke to the people in the past, speaks about the future and shows us how to react and respond to the difficulties and discovering of our lives today. Bible Discovery TV is a program hosted by the Hembry family as they uncover the meaning of God's message to planet Earth. To discover the meaning of God's Word and how the Lord is speaking to us today, visit Bible Discovery TV at BibleDiscoveryTV.com. That's BibleDiscoveryTV.com Let me tell you about my Yeshua. I don't want you to hear this from me. Listen to this. I'm going to start in Hebrew and then start and then repeat in English. Habsora al pi Yohanan. Bereshit haya adavar, ve adavar haya im ha Elohim. Ve Elohim haya adavar. Hu haya bereshit im ha Elohim. Ha kol niya al yedav, u mi biladav lo niya, kol asher niya. Bo hayu chaim, ve ha chaim hayu or, livnei ha adam. Ve ha or meir bachoshech, ve ha choshech lo hesigo. I just read John 1, 1 in Hebrew. Let me repeat this in English. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things with med were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And listen to this, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And in Hebrew, that means the darkness couldn't reach that light. It couldn't, um, it couldn't overcome that light. This is my Yeshua. And if you want him, you can have him too. I'll, I'll share with you. This is my Jesus. This is our Messiah. You know, in the beginning was the word. Does that sound familiar like Genesis? Bereshit, bara Elohim, right? In the beginning, Genesis, Bereshit. And in the beginning was Yeshua. In the beginning was the Spirit of God. In the beginning was the Messiah, was the Son of God. God himself in the flesh. You know, when I first came to know the Lord, and that's a bit of a journey there too, 
maybe for another time. When I first came to know Yeshua, there was all these voices in my head, but I was in love. I was in love because I found my beloved. I even remember having a dream, and it was so vivid. And in this, in this dream, I'll share with you, in this dream, I saw myself in the streets of Jerusalem while Yeshua, Jesus, was being dragged on the cross. And I was one of the spectacles. I was just one kind of like standing there in the crowd. And as he passed me in that vision dream, our eyes locked. And I yelled, Ahuvi, my beloved. And, it, and, and, and I meant it. I mean, he, he's my beloved. And then his eyes in that vision slash dream kind of said it all. The, the, his eyes were saying, it's okay. I have to do this. I have to do this for you and for her and for him and for you who's watching this show right now. I have to be crucified to take away your sins because there's no other way. There's no temple anymore. Nobody's going to sacrifice to Elohim, to the temple. And even if they do, you know what? We keep on sinning. Then how, how are we going to ever be really cleansed? But he did that with his blood shed on the cross, on that tree of sacrifice for me and for you. Do you understand that gift that he has given us? And he's not asking for anything back except to be in a relationship with him. To be in a relationship with him. This is really what God wanted from day one. God created Adam. It's not Adam. It's Adam, which means, yesh, which means a human. Adam is a Hebrew word for human. God created human to walk in the cool of the day with him, to have conversations, to love somebody. God wants a family. Do you have children uh, or, you know, a partner? I, I don't have biological children, but I have three nieces and one nephew. God bless them. They are like my children. My love for them is beyond this world. I will do anything for these children. They're the, the closest to biological children that I can ever have. That's not even iota of how much God loves you and me and them too. Because when I pray for them, God reminds me, remember, I love them a little bit more than you do. Thank God, right? He's in control, not me. But God created Adam, human, Male and female, he created them to walk in the to walk with him, to talk to him, to have a relationship with him. And that's all that the Son of God, God in the flesh, wants from us in return for being on that cross. So when when I when I came to know the Lord, um, I was I began to study the Tanakh, the Torah, um, and the New Testament, the Brit Hadasha. And thankfully I had a, a wonderful mentor who discipled me for a whole year and sat with me and taught me. And what I remember reading was in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah the prophet. And I have it open somewhere else because I was going to talk about something else. And Jeremiah, where are you? I'm going to look for Jeremiah. Doesn't matter. I'm going to read it from my, from my memory. In the book of Jeremiah, God said, oh, there it is. In chapter 30, verse 30 or 31, depending on your translation, Hadasha, a new covenant. Okay, in English, behold the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Uh, Jeremiah 30, 31, 31. This is from, the, from, from prophets, right? From Nevi'im. When I read that, I remember um, kind of sensing that the word Brit Hadasha is such a taboo in, in Israel, at least in, in the time when I grew up in Israel, pre-internet time where we couldn't search anything. But yet it's in our Tanakh. So why is it such a taboo? Uh, it's history, persecution, um, spirits, demonic spirits, etc., etc. At the same time, this is God's promise to us. And the word brit, a covenant, in Hebrew actually means a little deeper than just a covenant. 
it's actually a contract. In fact, when a boy, a Jewish boy, reaches the age of eight days, he is undergoing a Brit Milah. Same word, Brit, which is a circumcision. Okay? Brit Milah literally means the covenant of the word in the flesh of that little boy. There is a covenant. And yet, listen to this. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, uh, verse 6. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love Adonai your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. Here's that word again. The Brit Chadasha, the New Testament, if you may, and the Old Testament or the First Testament are together. They are, uh, the story doesn't finish with Malachi, Malachi or Micah or Divrei Hayamim. It does, it, it's like half the story, right? You got to get the whole story to know who God is, to have a relationship with God. You can't say, well, I don't believe in God because what has he ever done for me? Tell me, do you know God to say that? It's kind of like um, you're not friends with your neighbor, but you say, well, I don't like her. She's never done anything for me. Do you know her enough to say that, you know, she has never done anything for you? Get to know God for yourself. Open the Bible. Read it. Read it for yourself. Pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal things to you. Don't believe me or anybody else. Do it for yourself. I spoke about living water. Let's go back to that. Yeshua, or Jesus, right, is living water. He also says in the book of John that he is the door. I don't know where it is right now because I am literally following the Holy Spirit. Yeshua says he is the door. He is the good shepherd. He is living water. He is everything for you. And if you want hope in this world, you have it. You just need to reach out your hand and he'll take it. I was on the floor at a cancer center on my knees saying, God, this is all I got. I'm not running away anymore like Jonah. Please forgive me. I don't know what you're going to do with this life of mine, even, even if I'm going to live or not. I have no idea. You know, doctors are talking to me about terrible prognosis and all that. But God, if you would use my life for your glory, it's all yours. You know, and then when I learned to apply scripture onto my life, healing came. Yes, I've been to also treatments, etc. But I'm talking about healing from the inside out, not outside in. If you want those living water to heal you, to touch you, reach out. He will give it to you freely. If you want hope that is not one day there, one day not, reach out your hand. It's right there. He's been waiting. He's known you before you were even born. Read Psalm 139, and you'll see that God knew you or us before we were even born. Isn't that awesome? He saw us before we were born. So imagine you saying, Lord, I'm returning. I'm coming back to you, right? It's not like you're discovering God. You're just returning to God. If you want hope, it's there. But remember, you have hope. This hope has a name. His name is Yeshua.
Well, I hope you enjoyed the journey with me from Tarshish back to Ninveh like Jonah. That was my story. Hey, that could be your story too. In fact, you may have an amazing, inspiring story. We'd love to hear from you if you want to share that with us. Today, we took a journey about who is uh, Yeshua and what the name Yeshua means and who is the Messiah and why he came to us. And I want to leave you with this lovely scripture again from the book of John chapter 6. But I say these things that you may be saved. And that is the promise of Jesus. Do you want to be saved? Say yes to God today. He's right there holding his hand reached out to you. Until next time, I'm Sherry Joshua and be blessed.